Ajram Ajram, I work in the domain of drama, the drama therapy or psychodrama. And basically, I'm a director and a trainer. I work in the domain of media and filmmaking and everything related to media. I developed uh, towards uh, the psychodrama in a harmony with my experience in the domain of media and filmmaking and theater as well. And uh, that was uh, in relation with uh, my youth for a long time. I developed an experience in psychotherapy and that experience is related to one of the domains of psychology or one of the necessities or conditions of psychology in the domain of therapy, which is called psychodrama. The basic meaning of psychodrama is solving the psychological problems through drama. At the beginning, I studied the theater and drama, and I focused uh, my studies on the psychological side while studying drama or media, because uh, studying the characters through dramatic performance or theater is able to lead you directly to psychotherapy. For example, the first work that I did in the domain of theater was the psychotheater in Psycho Sanatorium, and that in, was in order to drive or obtain the characters, the reason that lies behind their psychological problems and diseases and what led them to have these problems. The nature of uh, theatrical work, I mean uh, the base in this work uh, is psychological formation of the real life characters, their problems, their illusions, diseases, their ordinary life and their achievements. And uh, so from here, my academic study in this domain uh, developed step by step with my psychological studies. And uh, like this, I made this uh, a mixture that enabled me to focus on, s on a certain side and to invest uh, the work in radio, uh, theater, television and media in a psychological concentration. That was the thing that made uh, that happened with time. At the beginning, uh, I mean, uh, as for my basic uh, nurturing, I was affected uh, by mosques. Uh, I um, used to go to mosque when I was only six to um, seven years old, and that uh, increased my religious affection towards uh, the Prophet and Ahl al-Bayt, peace be upon them as its redeemments. Uh, they are considered as spiritual reservoirs to all the inherited culture that we were raised on step by step and moment by moment. Uh, from the mosques to its yards to the imams books like the 12th imams books. Uh, I used to read a lot in the domain during this stage of adolescence like imams, ideas, their attitudes and, um, and their stages. Uh, each Imam had a stage and each Imam had a role and a function during his life. Then we entered the, the practical uh, side of life and the occupation. Uh, and in a spontaneous way we started to benefit from that psychological and cultural reservoir that the prophets presented and applied in their real life. They were uh, the most important uh, spurs that led me to find out that the real meaning of a human's creation the creation of positive human beings who were uh, uh, who had the insistence to reach uh, their goals the human being who is correlated with allah and uh, with the semitic values and who sacrificed for the sake of great ideas and values i remember in the first stages in my life uh, when i was eight years old my sister used to tell us about imam hussein's stories in every ashura we were in a state of war and we were displaced out of our house also. I became affected by the details of Imam Hussein's revolution, the bravery uh, at that time, the firmness in the decision of confrontation which had no compromise, the acute decisions which uh, knew no powerlessness or surrendering, facing the oppressor and the um, and taking decisions. All these ideas and morals came in the beginning of uh, in the beginning of every story about Ashura. They uh, they started in our childhood, 
and began to grow up with us until they became an essence in our life. In history, Imam Hussein um, is more than a historical symbol. He is the nostalgia, the passion, the tear, the brave, the determination. Simply, he is a school of life. These days are more sophisticated than before at the level of ideas and getting the past historical experiences. However, in the stages of childhood, adolescence, and youth, our concern in Imam Hussein was more passionate, more typical, and more spiritual and related or, um, or connected to, hum to humane depth which enables him to create the impulse in order to continue in this commitment to the divine message and that greater character at the religious and personal levels. As a human being, I should have an issue, a cause in life, because that great man who passed through history sacrificed himself and his family and friends for the sake of his cause, and that cause is all about religion, straightforwardness, peacefulness, uh, love, sympathy, and loving other, even the enemy. I mean, um, these values that Imam Hussein transmitted, the values of freedom, be free in your world, his voice is still heard even in our dreams, our hopes, our worries, and uh, our love as well. Imam Hussein's revolution is a really a continuous revolution in the full sense of the world. Nobody can abolish it because the challenge is now uh, our ability to transmit it to our children and the next generations. As for me, I enclosed my work in production with psychological side. I mean, all films that I had worked on uh, were included in the liberation of 2000. Was, uh, an, was a cause that I made more than a film about. The films um, focused on some personal experiences that happened uh, with those ordinary people, uh, how they were able to adjust them with uh, during and after the war, um, how they preserved their values and how they challenged during and after the war. The things now are not that direct. I mean, when we want to embody our sense of belonging to Ahlul Bayt, peace be upon them, we should apply their values that they concentrated on them, and also the religion that they preserve in order to keep it and make it continuous and compatible with the future. Uh, and here comes the basic challenge. The work in the domain of media is mostly the straight work which sheds light on the uh, causes of the oppressed, the tired, the conquerable, and uh, also those who need help. So here was the main concentration of my films, and in some cases or issues that I discussed in my films were like uh, combating addiction, combating uh, deviation, cases of deviation, uh, with the youth uh, is exposed to and how can we treat it by drama. The problem of media's war and what is called also the soft war and the psychological war. All these dangers that threaten our generation can be treated through drama by making films related to drama and also making stories, games and uh, plays and so on. Now, um, in our domain, which is the psychotherapy and drama therapy, I created a group of theories which help practically uh, in solving people's problems or saving those problems. Or even solving the problems of a person who have certain psychological cases on their own. Uh, about uh, the Alok program, it is a program that includes some new ideas, ways, and new practical conclusions which are far away of the classical things in psychology or psychotherapy, or even in drama therapy. I mean, uh, drawing therapy, story therapy, especially pre-sleeping stories, uh, meditation therapy, imitation therapy, acting therapy, initiation therapy, ideas and values, uh, therapy, talking therapy, teaching therapy, and so on.
all these means of therapies I mean all the means that present in life may be an entrance to therapy for example if someone have a failure problem in school how can you solve that in the Alok program we worked on solving these kinds of problems and even solving the problems of emotional shocks that may happen between engaged marries or uh, lovers like when a girl loves a guy and the latter died before they got married or they broke up before getting engaged or married usually the youth in the beginning of their life uh, stop on these kinds of shocks a lot uh, for this uh, for they should be say, uh, solved also we created what is called 7x7x7 seven by seven by seven in order uh, in order that everything can be solved uh, be in seven sessions, seven ways, seven habits, seven uh, skills, uh, and seven ideas, it's, uh, and so on. All these means that there will be seven new behaviors and that can be affected by the seven dimensions rules that we are living in our life at a personal level and um, on anonymous uh, work. We can make organized steps. Sometimes idea an idea can change in one's life and this idea may be one skill like playing in colors and thinking through colors the story is all about one entrance to the therapy maybe through the radio or through hearing my own voice because some people if they hear their own voice they become so affected and this uh, if their hearing sense is so strong but other people whom their sight is so strong can be affected by colors by shapes by games so we can enter their lives through color games uh, even uh, their thinking as well we can also support their body's energy points through colors and here is a domain of energy therapy the outlook program was put in order to give practical simplicity to transmit and uh, information uh, or a service to individuals or groups through a certain hierarchy during seven weeks or seven sessions of trainings during one month and a week uh, because these things uh, with the brain harmonize with the brain uh, then the brain gets used to grow to a stage every one month the Alok program was put in order to give a practical simplicity to transfer information or a service to uh, individuals or groups through a certain hierarchy uh, of works during seven weeks or seven sessions of training during one month or a week because this uh, thing harmonizes with the brain and then the brain gets used to grow to a new stage every one month or or a week uh, even in children's stages of growth and also adults any idea that enters one's mind or brain and becomes a practical habit in his life needs seven sessions or seven weeks because the neural ramifications which are found in his brain and uh, related to these new habits ideas behaviors um, need this time to be completed and then become a basic part of his life and growth instead of the bad habits or behaviors that he doesn't want this mixture is very simple and easy uh, and it harmonizes with no complexities I mean the whole story doesn't need six years or or uh, 300 to 400 sessions of psychotherapy to get rid of person's problems now there's a new innovation like working through achievement science so instead of working to get rid of a certain problem I work to sub substitute it b by a positive idea instead of thinking how to get rid of grief and crying I move on to think how to smile and how to laugh I also think to find the right format or sample that I should apply or follow uh, instead of thinking uh, how to get rid of the negative format that the western media is laying it in people's minds.
of the ideas, um, theories, and things that we've uh, learned in drama, psychology, psychotherapy, sociotherapy, and all the problems that need therapy have one origin, was, which is uh, Imam Ali, peace be upon him. Even the theories that are now put uh, uh, and aim to treat human's way of thinking, the rules of relation between the psychotherapist and his cases, the rules of group therapy and how can we understand them. <coughs> uh, all these are, uh, are or may be derived from basic theories uh, said by Imam Ali in Nahj al and some persons pretended and still pretend that theories belong to them. Let's take an example in understanding the two states of uh, men, which are conscious and unconscious, and uh, understanding the whole theory of psychologically, which may be analytical and behavioral and so on. We remember here Imam Ali's speech, which clears uh, that we can understand a certain person through what he knows about himself. But uh, what he doesn't know about himself and what he, he doesn't know about uh, what he knows about himself. We should all know about the famous speech of Imam Ali in this issue. And also he doesn't know that he doesn't know uh, this included in the speech too. So the speech is an explanation uh, to psychological uh, theory that I have read and worked on and origin it is related to our historical references and here the western achievement frankly I mean the western cognitive achievement and the western analysis that was able to decompose those theories and apply them practically and contrary to our society unfortunately was and still busy uh, with wars and life specific uh, concerns uh, and we didn't reach a level in which we make studies or researches in our university uh, that make these studies and researches yet in order to study the history and to make theories and to solve the current problems you can find as much as you want in this history and in Imam Ali's heritage of solutions to our problems uh, at the scientific universal levels and also the level of understanding the, art, the atom even understanding black holes so you feel that there is something weird and there is an exaggeration but the scientists are able to understand them from their dimensions so we understand our world and all other complications found in sciences whenever we read a new discovered thing in science we go back in our mind to what we memorize about imam ali peace be upon him here is the essence because look how much imam ali was preceding us and we still really neglect maybe for logical or objective reasons or vice versa this is another discussion uh, we aren't ex 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 uh, we still really we really neglected maybe for uh, logical or objective reasons or vice versa and this is another discussion we aren't extract, extracting or uh, and concluding from this uh, great man and this great uh, historical inheritance, but others understood and discovered Imam Ali more than us. We just love him and praise him without even knowing the reasons why. Other uh, relation uh, with him is just formal and emotional in an ignorant way and not the opposite. So how come if we have the knowledge uh, if we pretend that we belong to Imam Ali, peace be upon him, we should respect him and ourselves at least. In our work, we are in need to idealistic models to introduce them to people uh, who have problems in their life. I mean problems with themselves and the relations to their own life. So you should know the right and idealistic format in order to try to follow and apply uh, to become better. And there is no better one than Imam Ali, peace be upon him, or other Imams, each according to his historical stage and role. So I can simply introduce to my case a sample of Imam Ali's spiritual dimension, socio-dimension, 
political dimension, military dimension, and also his dimensions of bravery and heroism. We need all these dimensions to be balanced. The characters or the pathoses that we work on them uh, in media uh, or drama or uh, drama therapy require certain models and these models need distinctive characters at the level of brave, spiritual and uh, moral levels and at the levels of dealing with people. And these characters are often uh, the Imams, peace be upon them, like Imam Hassan and Hussein. For example, last time, a month ago, uh, there was a family crisis uh, due to a member whose deeds were wrong, and we wanted to tell him that uh, he was wrong in order to correct his deeds. So I made use of Imam Hassan and Hussein's incidents uh when they taught an old man the right obligation in a direct way this is a model and or an idealistic way to tell a person indirectly that he was wrong without being hurt or affected thus we transfer this format to a representation to a representation uh, as an idealistic uh, therapeutic drama so we represent in a play the characters of imam and hussein uh, when uh, they were children and so an old man who didn't know how to abolute correctly uh, and uh, how they came and told him let's see who knows ablution the most so when he saw them he directly knew that he was wrong without anybody's favor this point exactly is a social epidemic found in our social relations I mean when someone makes a mistake the other humiliates and insults him pretending that he is advising or teaching him the religious rules and the taboos in this way one feels as if he is disregarded by the society because of an ignorance of something or a certain mistake that he had done he really feels that he is dis, uh, disregarded by the society and his friend despite of the matter is so simple and very ordinary so we go back to our ideals to our imams and to our prophet and his great biography we and we put again these formats and ideals in an active circulation like in drama media or personal life and uh, then we ask whether they introduce correct formats to solve our problems or not and the answer is of course moreover we benefited a lot from imam ali's participation in the battlefield for example as a treatment of anger uh, in so many cases uh, we make use of an incident happened with imam ali in the battlefield uh, when he battled omar bin wad al -Ami. And uh, the latter said something that bothered the Imam, which brought him anger. So when he became angry, he stopped for a while and then killed him. He took minutes to calm down and then came back to and killed him. When they asked Imam Ali about that, he said that he wanted to kill him for the sake of Allah and not just because of anger. So this is a very helpful, helpful in psychotherapy or an um, even uh, a format that we can represent or give it to those who have the same problem in their life because uh, agitations are always the number one problem in so many psychological problems uh, so this format found Imam Ali uh, to treat anger can be applied again by the way, the Western writer Cartel speaks about the power of now. The meditation therapy and also the Indian therapy are considered also a base to psychological therapy. Also, the modern study of Stefan uh, Covey speaks about the distance between the stimulator and the response, which is a study found in psychology. This study says that the wise person is who lengthens the distance between the stimulator and the response. The animal doesn't have this distance between the two actions, so it faces a stimulator and the response directly, whereas the human is the only one who can place a distance. So if I lengthen the distance, I will calm down, think properly, and manage my anger, and not vice versa. So in the issue of controlling the anger, we found that uh, Imam Ali is a school in this, in this domain. So the analysis of this issue 
uh, its psychological dimension and uh, also the, its mechanism of working are considered a school that we can make use of to solve peop uh, anger uh, management issues. The Holy Quran and the Prophetic Sunnah are the simple and easy references that enter the heart and make change which is supported by sanctity and uh, the universal reference. Prophet Muhammad and the Holy Quran have a great importance in the consciousness and unconsciousness of people. Quran is found in the subconsciousness of all humans. The original values are found in the genes of all people. All these are innately found in, and Allah, uh, glorified and exalted be He, uh, make them innate. So the Quran came to stimulate and awaken this innate uh, behavior to bring it out in a straight way. For example, uh, when I plant a uh, wheat seed in autumn, I will harvest it in summer after seven months. It will pass through autumn, winter, light and thunder, spring to reach summer season. Apple seed need also around a year to become a tree and produce fruits and also flowers. Um, so it is the same for the good ideas to become fruitful and for the bad ideas to become uh, a bad tree. The Quran mentioned all of these ideas. The experiences that the Quran mentioned and also Prophet's stories, especially that of our Prophet Musa, peace be upon him, are so beneficial in order to extract therapeutic uh, formats to get a better human and to understand the formulations of his mind and psyche and uh, his internal attraction between the right and wrong, the good and evil, or what may uh, control humans' minds. So the Quran and the prophetic uh, Sunnah come to dissect this human and to simplify the information uh, to people in order uh, to be treated through uh, the Holy Quran. Al-Fatiha, for example, in, in, conclu in conclusion, uh, it, is, it says, show us the right path. Uh, I'm like all other humans. I mean, uh, sometimes I may go far from the right path. And uh, every time I pray, I ask God to bring me back to the right path. Every day I face challenges and temptations, or I forget, uh, or uh, I forget um, and don't pay attention to certain things, uh, like I feel as if I'll go astray and far from God's uh, mercy. Uh, Al-Fatiha alone, if we repeat it every day, if we meditate it practically, it's a school, it's a work plan in order to be uh, vigilant every day and awaken the human who sunk in a world of negative programming, uh, of uh, dramatic programming, and have a new demands that he is in this journey and will return back the way he was. The Quran comes to make you a vigilant and alert you that the world isn't your permanent place. You are here uh, temporary, but you will return back again. And it simplified the questions for us and our problems diminished. And the more beautiful than this is when you say Allahu Akbar, you throw away everything separating you from Allah. Despite it, uh, it's a very simple action. It relates you through throwing everything away, your problems, your worries, your relation with people, your fears, your money, your work, your ideas, your burdens, your questions, everything. Throw all these away in the name of Allah, the most gracious and most merciful.